box by Christopher, a proud sponsor of Die Hard Racing League, located at 222 Turnpike Street, Southeastern Massachusetts, 02375. Restoration and repair of all clocks, buying and selling antique and modern clocks. Authorized Howard Miller Clock Dealer, Howard Miller, Ridgeway, and Ethan Allen Authorized Service Center. We ship all over the country. As for shipping quotes, low overhead means low prices. We give the personal service the big stores can't. Sales, 508-944-9645. Service, 508-944-9273. Call now. It's clocks by Christopher.com. For four years, TampaSUVRentals.com has been serving visitors to the Tampa Bay, Florida area as the leading alternative to the traditional car rental experience. Instead of settling for a boring economy car from one of the big chains, save big and choose the exact SUV you want from our fleet. With free delivery service to Tampa International Airport, TampaSUVRentals.com is an all-star host on the touring car sharing platform. Learn more at TampaSUVRentals.com. All right, everybody, welcome. We are live here tonight. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, we are here with Die Hard Racing League's Flatfoot Series tonight, and uh, we're at Talladega Super Speedway. Next week, we will be back in the uh, Clocks by Christopher Cup Series at Indianapolis. I'm here with Wing. Wing's doing a lot better. Good to see you got your voice back somewhat, buddy. Yeah, I'm still coughing up my lungs, but that's fine. It's good enough to do racing. <laughs> that's right, you got two of them, man. <laughs> <laughs> You can cough up one and you can still function. I just want to say uh, sorry we, we uh, couldn't go live last week. Um, I had to go uh, downtown to Atlanta Airport and pick up my wife at the same time that the broadcast was supposed to go live. And uh, obviously, I have to go and pick up my wife if I want to uh, stay married and stay alive. So. <laughs> and I was, I was like essentially food bar anyway. I was pretty much bedridden anyway, so... It was kind of better for both of us, I think, unfortunately, that we missed out. Yeah. But hey, we're back. Yeah, we've got a good race going on here tonight. Right now, everybody's in qualifying. So far, Todd Craze got the top spot with a uh, 50. Oh, Bill Alt oh, just Bill takes Alt it. In. Yeah. And we should mention, by the way, we have about uh, two new drivers, I believe. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, we have two new drivers to the league, Bill Alt and Sean Stevens. They're on the uh, triple numbers, the 196 and the 126. Yeah, you won't see their Martin numbers. Count as a rookie, but he's obviously not too new. Yeah, but you won't see their numbers on the stream. I haven't had a chance to uh, update the numbers file. I'll get that done this week, and we'll have them up. So you'll see, like, right now in the qualify, you see by Bill Alt, there's no number. By Rob Jenkins, there's no number. And by uh, Sean Stevens, there's no number. But on their cars, you'll see their number. So, uh, yeah, just gonna say, you know, welcome to Bill Alt, welcome to Sean Stevens. Hope you guys do well. And Bill Alt's already showing he's got some speed by taking that quality time. Yeah, 55, 3, one, 2, one 3. One one thousandth of a second. That's how close he had to cr This is going to be good. Yeah, going to definitely be good. Now, you got the rundown of what the trucks are doing out there, right? Yeah, yeah. I've been, you know, been talking to the guys. Seems like it's going to be very loose most of the race. It's pretty much the trucks are turning themselves at this point. Wow. That's definitely yeah. not going to be fun if they're uh, in a pack. Absolutely. Yeah. And as, well, I would also give it a heard, you know, this is a little, little secret script I was getting from everybody. There is a you know, reasonably well-known bump on the front stretch on the tri-oval. 
if you're pushing a guy there, it can get very messy. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the definitely. Truck is already very loose. That bump could just be. If you're bump drafting them at that moment, it can just send them flying. Yeah, you're probably gonna end up going around. The guys are really gonna have to stay on their toes. I'm sure they're probably gonna tell everybody to uh, probably stay off each other going through that tri oval. Yeah, but it's gonna be loose all around though. That's not the only only place. It's gonna be loose around the entire track. Loose while drafting, loose while aside drafting, loose just in, and in general, loose in entry, loose on exit. It's this this truck feels absolutely evil. As the guys were saying, it just turns itself. Uh, we're right now with James Brown. Just gonna take a quick little ride with him, and then uh, we'll go to the anthem, and then uh, we'll get the grid going. But uh, we are here tonight. We're glad to be back. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, next week, like I said, we will be at uh, Indianapolis. Back in the Clocks by Christopher Cup series. Tonight we are in the Flatfoot series. And uh, this is going to be Talladega. Um, you heard Wingy. He's a little bit loose out there. Going to be, uh, I don't know, going to be a, a nail biter at some point, you know? Yeah, most of these guys had a pretty good practice to feel how the trucks are. But, you know, it's, it, it's still going to be very slippery. What do we got? 241. All right, we're going to uh, jump to our national anthem and then uh, we'll be back with the grid. So sit tight, everybody, and we'll be right back. We are in the land of the free because of the brave. And so we ask by your grace that you would bring them home soon and safe. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. We are back. We got about 40 seconds or so left. Uh, so far, James Brown got the top spot now. Check that out. Yeah, like James Brown's kind of known for being Mr. Flatfoot and just always keeping his foot in the throttle even during crashes. <laughs> so, and this kind of, kind of suits him a track like this. Just don't take your boot off. This is going to be pretty interesting, man. Let's see. Uh, hey, take a quick look at the weather. 117 on the track during qualifier. Let's see what it goes to once we roll over to uh, the grid. But you are track watching. Track ticked down a bit since practice. Has it? Yeah, it was about 120, but it, and it's slowly ticking down, but it's not really fast. All right, well, guys, you're watching uh, Die Hard Racing League's uh, Flatfoot Series. Uh, it's a pretty good series. We alternate in between, and uh, it should be a good race here tonight. We got a decent sized field and uh, take a quick look. James Brown has got the pole. So as soon as I, these guys start gridding up and I find them, I'll uh, get out there. All right, let's uh, run through our starting grid. Starting first is the number 68, James Brown. Congratulations to James on that. Seth Schultz gonna be starting second, wow. Third will be Bill Alt. Todd Cray is going to start fourth. Fifth is going to go to Adam Matz. Art Peck is going to start sixth. Seventh goes to Sean Stevens. Jeff Yenish will start eighth. Ninth is going to be Rob Jenkins. Ron Hollyfield rounds out your top ten. 
Then we got Patrick Desolni in 11th, store to Kenneth Sager in 12th. Robert Berris back in 13th, which is surprising. Steve Yenich in 14th. Mark Jenkins 15th. David Kamen. Joshua Schlitt in 17th, and that will be the last of the guys with qualifying times. Then we got Jason Mullis, Mike Major, Matt Wagner, Cody Franklin, and then finally Adam Lewis. Nice. We got 22 guys out here right now. Now, am I hearing somebody on the throttle or something? I'm hearing a strange noise in my headphones. I don't know if it's just me or is there somebody? Uh, I can't hear. That's weird. Yeah. Ho hopefully it's I not. Say surprising. surprising spots from Robert Barris and Josh Stewart. Like Stewart is Mr. Aggression. He can be really, really fast. And I might have maybe got a little bit of an inside scoop on who he's going to be working with during this race. We'll see if that pops up later. Okay. I'm keeping that car close to my chest because I'm not <laughs> sure if they wanted me to say just yet. <laughs> I know, I don't like to say anything, especially when we see guys to um, doing the uh, shut off and stuff, because there are some guys that watch, listen to the stream, and I'm like, damn, I'm yeah. just giving away their, uh, giving away their information. Anyhow, for the, 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 nice the for the start of this race, we got uh, partly cloudy skies. We got 81 degrees in the air. We got 115 degrees on the track, so we'll see if the temperature is going to go up or down here. Uh, James Brown in that number 68 right now on the inside. You got the 31 of Seth Schultz starting second on the outside. Uh, we'll see if James Brown does stay on the inside for the start. I can't imagine not. I mean, that's kind of where you want to be. Yeah, you always want to leave from the inside. And I'll say, with that temperature, we are closing on 3 p.m., so it might get a bit hotter for a while because, you know, roughly 3 to 4 p.m. is the hottest part of the day. Yeah, it gets so it might wicked get a little hot. Bit warmer and then drop off. We're also hearing from the guys as well. They were they were testing in practice if they could even blow up their engine if they tried, and they couldn't get it to. Really? They actually could not get it to blow. And that's a surprise because who was it? Remember somebody? Uh, I think it was Camara. Yeah, he yeah, uh, all of a sudden out of nowhere, <laughs> man, it just blew up on him. Also, it's, it's been multiple times that Camara has managed to stick out in these flat foot races because he had that uh, was it third place finish with the five cars. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it should so be pretty we'll good. Starting, in, um, starting back in 16th, but that doesn't mean much. It's a long, long race. And from what we hear is uh, most guys are going to be doing a four-tire stop, right? Absolutely. It is too slick for anything else. Now, I uh, wonder... This is, like, like I told, I'm quoting this. Rear tires are turning into slicks. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if anybody's going to take a chance for uh, position to try to do two tires, especially if a caution comes out quick uh i don't know man because these laps are long even like, even two tires after two laps might not be worth it i know but we got a couple of darers out here man so you never know and early in the race is the best time to try if they're loose maybe right left sides only all right pace cars going in i don't think a left side only would work but hey we'll see there's been a few guys have tried some silly things and it managed to pull off Right here they come, waiting on that green flag to fly. James Brown on the inside, Seth Schultz on the outside. Long await here to the line. Green is out. What? Well, it feels like it's in slow motion for a moment there. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little while to wind these suckers up, man. Oh yeah. Well, James Brown's gonna be a hold that inside, no worries. Seth actually got a pretty good run, but could not quite get clear. And he's got Todd Cray right behind him, too, uh, trying oh, yeah, to keep him up there. I'm, I hope the outside line is actually able to work, because it's nice to see when they're side by side fighting it out. We'll like, have to see. Like, I'm hearing side drafting makes these things even more loose than usual, so it might be possible. You notice that, by the way, that Seth and Cray aren't in the middle lane. They're on the far outside lane. Let me see, that let me see a couple of guys uh, switching, a few guys jumping lanes here, going up and down, trying to... Uh, Figure out where the best spot is to be. We got 75 laps here, so there's plenty of oh, time. Here he goes already. Bill Alt going into the outside line to try and take the position away from uh, from James Brown. Lap one, we've already got an attempted pass for the lead. I think he can actually get it over the front stretch. There yeah, he does. it's going to go to him. Wow, is James Brown not even going to be able to lead that lap? Oof. Is Bill staying up there? Or is he going to tend to go down? I'm kind of curious to see what he's going to do. Yeah, looks like he's pretty content to be up there right now. 
you might be pulling a Barris. Barris was uh, in one of his previous races. He sat in that middle lane and never left it. So everyone kept part, like trying to pass him on the inside and just could not make it work. And he was always just far, ahead, far enough, far enough ahead that the guy behind him could not slot in. And nope. look, there he goes. He jumps down to the inside. That's going to put Schultz back on the uh, outside line. But Bill Alt showing that he can do some racing here in uh, Tally. Yep, keep, keep your foot in the floor and you're all good, mate. Let me said, Seth will get the lead this lap with that amazing run with Cray. Yeah. We got Schultz leading a lap. We've got Bill Alt leading a lap. We're just waiting to see if uh, James Brown actually moving back into fourth at the second. That don't really mean anything. I mean, there's plenty of time, man. There's, sometimes we have some record-breaking uh, lead changes here. Look at 36, yeah, Art Peck up there. Up? I said, look at uh, 36 of Art Peck up there right behind these guys. Yeah, he's sitting right behind Cray, too. He's kind of giving the house alone a bit more boost. And who's that? Desonia right behind him also. So you got four trucks up on the outside line. You got a little bit of a distance to the uh, next leader of the outside line. Keep Which, an eye out for the back, Mike Major. Yeah, he Mike went to the Major. outside line with a car behind him. Oh, and here goes that. Schultz. Yeah, Schultz drops it down to the inside. Ah, oh, nice. And Cray's going to get a great run here. Look at that run he's okay, got. Mike Major, Cray Franklin is back in like 15th position. And now here they are just behind the top uh, six. Yeah, they are right there. Yeah, in fact, Mike Major is technically currently in sixth position. So that's the massive push forward. Oh. Just he saw the right moment. Somebody uh, running towards the back. Yeah, I think he's he might be opting to go to the back. Yeah, he is. Smart though, man. You know, you got to be around at the end. If you think it's getting a little bit too racy up there, the car, the truck don't feel right. Uh, it's not really going to hurt him to go back. Is he able to hang on? I don't know. He's he's right on the edge of draft range. Yeah, he's got. He's got a couple guys behind him. He's got Rob Jenkins, Mark Jenkins, Adam Lewis, so he should be. He, I don't think he's got any issues right there. And look at the 75 of uh, Robert Barris go up to the outside line now. And here comes, who is that? That's the 94? Oh, that's the 20 jumping up there. Matt Wagner jumping up with him also. Look at, look at Cray and Art Peck and Patrick Sonia coming up as well. Is, that, is Mike Page about to go three wide? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, a little bit better. Just left Cray out there. <laughs> that's the one that does seem to work for sure. It just yeah. doesn't, you can't quite stay up there for too long. It's kind of like Someone's the leapfrog. Yep. Exactly. Someone's going to betray you at some point. Keep an eye out on, I think, uh, Bill Alt at the moment. He look, looks like making moves to go outside. Who will hit that bump there? Yeah, he saw that truck did not like that. Exactly. That's the bump you got to be careful at the front, especially if you're bump drafting, because you will not see it coming, and the guy ahead of you will, might not even see it coming. And if he gets it even slightly wrong, and you're still pushing him, you can just straight up 360 him, and he's gone. I'm jumping in with uh, Todd Cray here for a minute on the outside line. I say the outside line is six, something kind of died. Here comes Seth now to the outside of uh, Art Peck for the lead. Bill Alt's following him through. Mike Major again going three wide with the 13 of Cody Franklin. Going right past Craig, coming, catching right up to the leaders. Oh, they, are they going to try three wide? They're going to try three wide again. Hit Franklin behind Mike as well. Oh, oh that almost goes bad. Oh, Cody 13. Oh, no. He oh. Has the Craig as well. Oh, man. I saw him up in the wall. I wasn't sure. It was that tri oval area too. We kind of knew that was going to happen. All right, let's let's back up a little bit and see what happened here. Oh no, the twenty gets involved. The twenty-one yeah. gets involved. That was a real punch too, man. Looks like the twenty-seven took a bit of a hit as well. The seventy-two of Camara, the thirty-five of Mullis. They all just take hits from this. Here's the thirteen. Let me go back to Franklin a second and see what actually started that. He just, met, he just lost control of it, unfortunately. Yeah. He gave, uh, gave Ooh. Push, and the car just got very unsettled. The 20 got into the 21. Oh, man. We got a lot of guys uh, going to get some problems here. We can go you back see, over. Like the, the truck just entirely lets go. I'm coming crank, even cockpit. He's like, it's fine, fine. Suddenly, it's just gone. You can't save it. 
Oh, man, I'm watching Todd Cray. Oh, Cray gets the 72 of Camaro to 35 of Mullis, and then to the inside wall, that truck is tore up. Yeah. Let's see what Adam he Lewis saw. Adam Lewis had a pretty good uh, shot look from inside his truck. Watch this. Oh, good. Are we going to go in a rut? Yeah, well, no, he... Uh, yeah, he actually started slowing down and almost caught a piece of somebody, but he, he uh, that pretty much parted for him. He got lucky on that one. All right, we're into caution number one. Yeah. That's it. These trucks are going to be really loose. You saw that. Without any real help from anybody else, he gave uh, Mike Major his push and then just gone. I'm not seeing any two tires yet, but you know, there might be someone bold enough to do it or insane. Yeah, I'm taking a look. Unfortunately, Todd Cray's sitting, getting a lot of damage fixed. I think his night might be uh, almost over. Whoa, Barris with a really good stop there. Did he? He did indeed. Did he? Barris did it. Right sides only for Robert Barris. Wow. I told you somebody would. Now, Barris is a good driver, so we'll have to see how it works for him. Yeah, like Barris knows what he can do, so if he's going right sides only, he is confident enough that he should be able to hold on to it. That or he's confident on the course. Robert Barris, uh, Seth Schultz going to be in second. Mike Major, look at him all the way up here in third. Art Peck, Galal, Adam Matz, Jeff Yanish, John Stevens. Nice looking trucks out there too. Our pet got what? The chicken pit on there? Yeah, looks like it says the chicken pit on there. The pets in paradise. What's Sean Stevens running? Uh Key Realty. Nice. Go to Mark Jenkins <laughs> 133. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm a child at heart. Kenneth Sager's pain. Kenneth Sager, let me see where he is. <laughs> I'm that? a child at heart. So. I can't see it. Ah, the Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know y'all watched the Flintstones out there. We had it for a while. I think on like Foxtel or something. Did they uh, did they change the uh, accents or did they leave it the way like the original Flintstones? Oh, we changed the accent. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear a bunch of Bogan Flintstones, mate? Oh, crocky, mate! It's time for get off work. Yabba dabba, yabba dabba do. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, like, there's no real reason for them to do it. They just leave the original accents in. Yeah. We hear, we hear a lot of American movie here. Yeah, I used to. <laughs> and British. We used to watch the. Uh, Flintstones, I think it's Spanish and then in Italian, man. It was kind of weird watching oh. it, but it was cool. <laughs> That'd be pretty awesome, actually. So you got Mr. Robert Barris up here right now. He's got two laps led. He is on the front. Uh, last winner in the Flatfoot series was uh, Steve Yenish, actually. And he won, where was it, at Daytona on July 21st. Yeah, like Steve and Jack Yenich both have like pace and good luck at times, so they can they can get up to the front as well. There's actually quite a few guys that are further back than I'd expect. Well, a lot of them too, like Steve Yenich. Um, I know that even the Jenkins, they used to hang out in the back and kind of take it easy a little bit and uh, work their way up. Yeah, well, these flat these flat foot tracks are team races. You can't really win it solo unless you're someone you can kind of you know you can sucker up to. So look at we got 112 degrees on the track, so we dropped three degrees, so it's on the way down a little bit. And these pace laps will cool down even faster because these cars will not be heating them up. And we have right now in the pits. All right, Camara just came out. We got Mullis in the pits, Todd Craze in the pits, Matt Wagner, and Cody Franklin. Yeah, a bunch of those guys got caught in that wreck. Yeah. So and a it, quick mention as well to guys that have moved forward fast. Barris started 13th. He's now in first, right? Then you have Mike Major with that really awesome move middle through that race. 19th to third. Wow. 
Then you have people like Joshua Stewart, 17th to 9th. It's not as big of a charge, but we know Stewart can be really fast. And he has that cough, cough hidden teammate somewhere. We'll have to go find him at some point. <laughs> he wasn't one of the guys taken out, was he? No, he was not. <coughs> he was not any of the guys in that incident. So, you know, his teammate's still around. He's got to go find him. We can play a game of who's his teammate. Yeah, who's my teammate? We'll find out soon, won't we? Yeah. Even Adam Lewis, 22nd to 15th. That's, that's still a pretty good move for him, too. Oh, we got somebody going in the pits. Couple guys, yeah. huh? It might as well, man. The extra lap or two of tires might actually help you. Yeah, it looks like Bill Alt, uh, Mark Jenkins, Steve Yenish, Adam Lewis, Rob Jenkins. Yeah, guys going in and topping off. I will say Bill Alt is a surprising one there. He was in the top five. Why he'd go in for tires and fuel? I don't really know. Yeah, he's he's got a different plan. He wants to be on a... He wants to be on a fuel, and I think he knows these guys are getting fuel, so they might be able to stick together. Well, Alt's definitely going for those tires as well. You might as well, then. Two laps of tires could be a big difference so mm -hmm. far. Exactly. All right, the Jenkins is going to come out ahead of him as well. Mark and Rob Jenkins, and then it'll be Bill Alt and Adam Lewis. All right, so it looks like uh, Robert Barris is going to take the inside. You got Seth Schultz and the outside first truck and the outside line, followed by... Uh, who is that? Art Peck. We got Mike Major yeah. down on the inside. Yeah. Major made that really good move. I'll see if he can pull it off again. And we saw Art Peck giving some really, really good pushing. And then taking the lead for himself at one point. So these guys are all well in contention for this fight. Barris is going to have to be on his toes with those right side tires. Yeah. He's going to have a bunch of hungry piranhas behind him too. I'm curious to see how that's going to work out for him. We know he can drive good, so we'll see how the truck reacts for it. But... Man, if it's as loose as they say, that's just going to put a lot more ice and grease on those tires. Yeah, but then the question now is, is he did he pick it because he trusts his driving, or did he pick it because he's expecting a caution? Right, that's just to get some... Position, right. he 13th to first. If he can hang on long enough... Yeah, if he can hold on to it, it's definitely worth it, but man, it, it's got, if, you, if you see deja vuing around one of these corners, we'll already know why. We'll have to watch him on the start, see if that truck breaks loose. Oh, yeah. That, that's going to be interesting as well. That start on that tri-oval is going to be a monster for him. And it looks like so far the three trucks that are still off are Todd Gray, Matt Wagner, and Cody Franklin, all still in the pits uh, getting some service done. See, maybe if they can get out. I know uh, the last couple races, points counted for both series, so we'll see how that shakes out after tonight. Barris waiting. Pace cars in, see what Barris does here. Yeah, he wants to get just right, so Mike May just comes with him and does not let Seth Schultz catch up. Well, it does. You never really know with Barris. Green flag yeah. is out. Got a good start. Schultz got a good start also. Yeah, no issues for Barris there. It doesn't slip or slide. He gets it started clean. Looks like everyone pretty much got a pretty clean start there. Yeah, a little bit of sh uh, shuffling going in the back. See a couple guys jumping the lines to uh, reposition themselves. Looks like the outside line is really starting to form up a little bit here. Yeah, on these restarts, his outside line does seem to be pretty strong, but we saw that near the end of that stint for a while, the outside line kind of gave up. So what this news? Or if the leapfrog game will continue. And right now, Barris and Major moving forward. They're starting to uh, split out there. Adam Matz, too, right behind him. The 126 of Sean Stevens. The outside line wants to work. You need to get Jeff Yenich up behind our pick. Two cars. Oh, look, Major line. goes up. Mike's going to steal that lead. Yeah, look at Major going to the front. Let's see if he can get up in front of Barris. Is he going to drop down and leave Schultz out there just so he can get that spot? I mean, having Barris behind you probably wouldn't be the worst thing. Barris is also always really fast. And look at Schultz, man. Right there on his bumper, too. Oh, yeah. Entire back shirts clean, no issues. Awful close here in that turn. 
Look at that run. Mike Major is there. They're going to fly past Paris here. Amazing the, ma the amount of work that third car will, will, will create. There's two cars, Seth and uh, Peck could not make it work. At the moment, uh, Major showed up. Suddenly, they were able to get well past Paris. Yeah, and here comes the uh, 89 and the 22 also. Starting to close in on that. Here comes the one of Ron Hollyfield. Sporting a new paint job here tonight. Oh, no, I think we had that last time. I think we commented about it. Which paint job? Uh, Hollyfield. Yeah, I think we mentioned that last time, yeah, I think. Yeah. I'm so used to seeing it in the yellow yellow car, I yellow truck. So natural. <laughs> and I'm kind of getting used to seeing him in the number one. And he used to go back to Soma when he's driving the yellow one again. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Major yeah, and Schultz. Once again, that run is just powerful. You gotta be careful with the travel though. Like if, if you're pushing like Seth is, you gotta be real careful. You don't get that wrong. Oh, we're gonna go the same way that Cody Franklin did. Oh, who is that? Uh, was that? Yeah, was that Yenish that went up in the top, kind of moved back a little bit, and then you have a little bit of space to that last pack with um, who is that? Not Bill Alt, uh Mark Jenkins. Mark Jenkins, Rob Jenkins, Adam Lewis. Yeah, Lewis and Kamara have fallen off to the uh, pack entirely. Kamara's car, I think, is it's done. Man, he's got some pretty bad rear right damage. It's going to make a loose truck even more loose, yeah, I think. Kind of just out there trying to log some laps, maybe get caught up with them. If he can get up with a couple of these guys, take a little air off there, it might be all right. Yeah, wow. enough, enough precautions will get him back Schultz. in the race. So he's going to be careful for now. Schultz, I don't know if he opted to go up to the third lane or got uh, loose and slid up there, but he's up there now. He's got to fill that hole up real fast. It looks like he opted to go to that, that higher lane. and then Oh, look at Barris. Nope. Barris gone up now. I don't put Mike. Yeah, I don't know. If he's uh, Maybe he doesn't like the way the two tires feel. He's moving back. I'm not sure I didn't really see anything happen with him, you know? So is the odd thing for that too, right? I was I went to his cockpit, and at no point did he turn the wheel really. It was the same angle from when he went sliding right to when he went straight after. Oh. At no point did he actually change the wheel. So that was that was really weird to see. Yeah. And then right there we saw Art Peck and Mike Major look like they almost had a moment. Car of a mind of its own for a moment there. Yeah, it looked like uh way too close on these ovals. I'd be, I'd be panicking if I was Mike Major. But these guys have raced long enough. They kind of know each other. Yeah, and um, that was a little bit, that, that was a little bit scary. They're, oh, getting, yeah. they're getting ready to catch up to uh, Slow Truck. Oh. Um, I think Adam Match just vanished. Yeah. Yeah, he's gone. Yep. He's inside. He might be falling through. Oh, no, he's back. <laughs> wow. That's lucky. lucky he was uh, able to come. Oh, come back. Even better, he didn't even lose his position when he did that. He popped up right back where he was. Yeah, I'm surprised because sometimes they come in, you know what I mean, and you're inside of another truck or part of another truck. or. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty fortunate for him. Probably very scary for the 126. Yeah, if I was short, I'd be like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, what's going to be? Like you're just hanging on because you know it's not going to be good. Yeah, normally when that happens, like it ends up either slowing down the 126 or slowing down the uh, 59 because the draft actually vanishes as well. Oh, look at that pick. Oh, 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 is he saving? Wow. He does save it, but he loses a lot of pace. He's yeah. Still... He's going to get stuck up there now. Good save from that pick, though. He could have overcorrected and lost the meet. Look at Seth Schultz now. Oh, going Schultz going to go like three? That. And look at Josh Stewart. Is, is Schultz Stewart's partner? Yeah, they're three wide right there. Yeah, Mike Major's now just stuck there in the middle, but he's actually managing to hold on pretty well. I think this next straight, though, is going to have Mike Major drop behind. Yeah, he probably wanted to jump down in between um, Yenish embarrassed but that hole closed really fast so he's kind of stuck in the yeah. middle and look at uh, Stuart and, uh, and Seth Schultz there working together 
Then you have Patrick Vassoni trying to capitalize on this as well, trying to get behind them, making this third line work. Oh, look at that. That's a little bit disorganized right there, but man, they're making it work. Oh, and look, he's coming back. Uh, Peck's coming back, back to like Major again. Yeah, he's going to come back to the thing. inside. If no one stops him, he's going to get right back to Mike Major and not lose any positions at all. Look at that run. Just look at it. He's just still going. No one jumped on that ride. And look, the Sonya now. He decided to go with them down in the middle lane. And yeah, he was behind the outside lane. They just weren't really moving enough. So why not go to the middle and try and get Major to move again? If I'm picking Look at Barris run. go up there too now. Oh, yeah, dude. Fun. Oh, dude. Well, Barris, you might gain a position out of this, so this is definitely a good call for Barris. Look at this. Three wide, a couple of rows deep, man. This is awesome. Yeah. Keeping my eye on Sony here. Is he going to pop up in front of Seth, or is he going to stay there? Yeah, I don't know, man. He's, uh... Nah, he's not going. He's yeah, not going to pop up. Yeah, he's doing pretty good there, man. And Major and Art Peck are still working that front though. At Matt still on the inside with uh, Sean behind him. And look, everybody, quickly back to uh, two wide. Oh! Nope, he's trying again. Yep. I was going to say, man, I wasn't sure if he slid up, but then when I saw them go with him, I was like, yeah, no, they're, they're uh, definitely trying to move again. You got to make something work. And that's what, the 210 Rob Jenkins with them, right? Yeah, he's up there with them also. That's the thing as well, you, can, you can't really make a two-car pack work really anymore. I've seen people try it, and you can kind of hold pace, but you can never really make the pass work unless you get a really, really, really good run somewhere. Yeah, you've really got to have a good run, and you got to have that line that you're fighting kind of wiggle a little bit and break it up. Exactly. So you either have to do, get, it, get really good luck, or you need to get a third car with you. And that means you now need to trust two different people. And look at our pick. Is he going to try and get past Major? No, he gets locked back in again. I was watching Schultz because he uh, kind of left the 22 up there. Now he goes back up to the top. Is anybody going to go with him? No. You left me, I'm leaving you. <laughs> <laughs> what it comes down to. So look at Adam Matz. Really well. Yeah. I think it's well to notice. Barris was back in sixth, right? Mm -hmm. Like sixth or seventh position in that line. Now look where he is. He's third in line in fifth position. So, worst case scenario for him was he was going to gain places from doing those moves. Which he definitely did. He's now in a much better position than he was before. Yeah, for the two tires that he's on, really doesn't look uh, all that awful. Like his truck isn't, doesn't look very unstable at this point. I mean, yeah, compared to the guys around him, he's not having issues. So it may have been that right, right side only was a good call for him. Let's jump in with uh, Art Pack, man, because he is awful close. Let's take a ride with him. Check this out. Oh, we got the lap car of uh, Jason Mullis. They're catching up to as well. Pass cleanly, no worries. If you're inside with that pick, you kind of see, you can't really see much over the bumper of Mike Major. And there's that bump on that triangle that will always, almost always get you. So they got it pretty clean there. Looking back from our X back bumper. See the 93 there of uh, the Sonya. The 75 of Barris down on the inside. Let's go jump with Barris. The Sonya have to get a, lot, a little bit faster, try and get closer to our Peck's bumper and really give him the push he needs for Mike Major. At the moment, they can't really get it further than where they are. They need that third car to really make that push work. Look at the 36 of Art Peck and right back on the uh, front of the team. The back of the team. And I will say, it's almost like they've got this well orchestrated too, because they, they manage to do it over and over and over the exact same way every time. I'll tell you what, for a bunch of loose trucks out there, they're doing a really good job of it so far. We're coming to uh, lap 25 next time. Bye. We're third down here.
It looks like still Matt Wagner, Todd Gray, and Cody Franklin. Uh, actually, Matt Wagner, yeah, uh, all three of them are still out. I'd say pretty much, I think they, their damage is uh, really bad. They'd probably opt to just stay out of the race here tonight. Man, look at this, too wide all the way up in the front. Look at Mike Major trying to get to the line first. He's going to get it? Yeah, he's going to make it to the line just by a couple thousands. Mayan said he didn't get it. It's like, hey, the mats has still got it. Oh, yeah, show, oh, it, goes, it switched uh, back to mats. Yeah, there goes Camara, unfortunately. Camara's not going to be a lap down. Yeah. That truck's lit. If he can grab the draft, he might be able to hold on, but like, I don't think he's going to have much chance. <laughs> I was just laughing. Innocent victim, I know. That's 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 Talladega and uh, Daytona for you. Yeah. Unfortunately, that one wreck, there was not really anyone's fault in that one, too. As uh, the guy chat said, you know, innocent victim, everyone was. Yeah. One guy got a bit loose, tried to save it, couldn't, and just everyone got collected. Adam Matt's doing a really good job, though, staying out front. He's got the 126 of Sean Stevens behind him. They've been doing a really good job. Uh, Barris being really patient behind the 126, kind of just riding it out. Uh, Mike Major really uh, showing a good a good head of steam on that outside line. Kind of shuffling around just a little bit. See how Peck and Major still trying to make that work. They need a third car that can really give them the push they need, and this will get all changed up. Yeah, I think the I think the problem is though, Art Peck. Hello. Oh, he's gonna. Yeah, I guess Mike Major got a little bit high. Peck got the run. He's got to go. But I think Peck pushing Major. Uh, Peck's truck's a little bit unstable, so I think you know with them not being able to stay as solid as the 126 and the 59 i think that hurt that outside line just a little bit but now let's see what the uh, peck can do out here in the front being pushed if the outside that line said, keep an eye out for like sean stevens now he's got the option to dive in the outside with possibly our peck's help and get to that lead or even barris they get a good run i don't know it looked like he was gonna do it, but yeah. if I was him, I would just stay where I'm at. I think it's, it's safer. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think it's safer just stay down on the inside line, man, and ride it out for a little bit. We still got quite a ways to go before uh, we even think about, you know, rolling the dice. We're gonna pass the. Uh, who is that? 42 of Adam Lewis, I believe. Okay. Yeah, he felt, unfortunately fell off the back, and you know, once you're on your own, you're done. And his truck is actually clean, just doesn't have the pace on it. Yeah, he's just, and he's down one lap, so he, if he stays out of trouble, he can uh, hopefully get back on the lead lap here if a caution does come out. Wolf, and then you can see Mullet up ahead as well, he's just limping along. Yeah, his front is angled. Yeah, his, his truck is pretty, pretty destroyed. Looks like Camaro's also putting it uh, behind the wall as well, he's done. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping to get another caution, I think, and try and get those damage repaired, but yeah. And look at the uh, outside line is slowly, I don't know if they're fading or starting to come back, but they definitely have some separation. But uh, Adam Matz, man. Now that shows Art Peck as the leader. So Art Peck's going to get up there and get a lap scored uh, leading. So good for, good for uh, Art. Is that outside line? Actually, has quite a few trucks there. They're just real hard, man. they got to they gotta stay stable. The Sonya yeah, seems to be pretty Peck. solid right now. Oh, no. Ed Peck is now left to Sonya on the outside. That being said, that there is Mark Jenkins and Rob Jenkins just behind uh, the Sonya. So you may get the Jenkins brothers pushing the Sonya to the front. And then you got Mike Major on the back of that outside line, too. Go back here, take a quick look. The uh, 89 of Steve Yenish here at night. And then right behind him is the one of Hollyfield. Then the 27 of Steve Yenish, who was the uh, last winner in the Flatfoot series. 
And then we go to uh, the 94th, Kenneth Sager. And he's back here in 12th in that number 94. And Sonia with a good run. He's got the 210 behind him. See if they can get to the line. Get the Sonia back up there. They'll get a lap lead. See right there. So Cecil Josh Stewart further back in, t in 12th and 13th, right? Right. And as I look back at them, they suddenly single file it out again. They might be making another move to the front again. In fact, watch them. They're actually already starting to move forward, passing a few cars. They're watching 31 and the 22 in that outside line right now. I wonder if they're, they're not afraid to take it up to the top. Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if they were going to go up. There they go. They're going to need a third third truck. It's not going to work with just two of them. They need a third guy. They got Otherwise, a good run going in, too. Oh, oh look at oh, 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 There you go. Yeah. Rob Jenkins up ahead. Rob Jenkins saw that. He's going up. Let's see if this works. Oh, that is dangerous. Stuart was pushing Schultz. Schultz was pushing Rob. Oh, yeah. The old rule, don't push the pusher, and my god. <laughs> don't fear the reaper, brother. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'll tell you what, these guys are doing a really good job, man. Uh, Art Peck out there in the front, we're uh, about a little bit three wide back there. We had that third lane going for a little bit. They kind of settled it back down. Uh, Schultz and Stewart going to jump back in line. Here comes, who is that, the Sonya trying to bring that outside line back to the front. I think for, for Schultz and for Stewart to oh. try and make that run work. They need to wait for the front lines to get destabilized somehow. We're going three yeah, wide again line. right here. The Sonya got, yeah, the Sonya got hung on the outside. He's going to quick get in behind Major. Him and the 210 come really close. Oh, that, that got dangerously close. And look at Matt's ahead. Matt's might be looking to switch to the outside line. Matt's sticking his nose out, nose out a little bit there. Maybe he's trying to get a bit of fresh air as well. Look at that outside line at the moment. What in the world? The two cars couldn't make it work, and yet you've got Mark Jenkins and uh, Mike Major making the outside line really run. Here comes the Sony to help him out as well. Yeah, it's starting to close back in. Oh, 31 of Schultz and the 22. Stewart going back to that third lane. Yeah, oh, man, here's the 210. <laughs> if you're going to get that speed, it's going to be fine. Be right. So, Mike Major up to the front. We might see these front lines start to get a little bit more messy as people start fighting for position. And that might be what Seth and Stewart need. Ah, uh, look at... And now Mark Jenkins is going to be scored your leader in the uh, 133. He's got uh, Mike Major right behind him. They're almost fully clear too. And look at Schultz and Stewart. They were trying again. Seems like when they get up in that third lane and uh, the 210 jumps up in front of them, it kind of slows them down. Yeah. It's kind of good they didn't jump up because they had Mullis out there on the outside. So. Yeah. Poke out. No, no, no. Poke yeah. back in. And back out. Back out. That's the, back the problem also is that even with, if, if Jenkins worked with them and they all three of them working together, they wouldn't have enough speed. They need to really destabilize these front lines first. Once the inside and the middle line start fighting it out a lot more and losing pace, then's your chance to strike. But it's not happening at the moment. So Seth and Stewart have this plan, like have this little like, teamwork going on and just, it will not work yet. Look at the weather. We're down to 105, so we're definitely dropping down in temperature. So that's going to help a little bit stabilize the trucks some, get a little bit more grip. And it looks like uh, we might have a challenge up here in the front. There you go, Seth and Stewart as well, by the way. They're trying it again. They've got a pretty good run. They might actually make it past a few cars here. But I don't think they'll be able to hold this after. Alongside the Sony at the moment. Yeah, this is scary. They're actually making a really good run of this. Look at that. I thought they fall off by now, but they're actually managing to kind of hold position. 
It looked like the 210 was going to jump up and get behind the 22, but he was going to stay behind the 93 of the Sonier. So we'll see how that works out for that uh, outside line. We're dropping back again some. Meanwhile, up front, uh, Mark Jenkins and uh, Art Peck really uh, battling it out, man, swapping lead laps. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. notice there seems to be a few little plans going around. Like, I've been watching Jeff, uh, yes, Jeff and Steve Yanich. They're sitting at the back of this pack and just sitting there. They're together, they're one, no, one and two together, right alongside Seth and Stewart actually, but they're kind of just sitting there, not making any aggressive moves, just kind of waiting. Yeah. They might be playing a long game here, getting ready for some really big move. Yeah, we're coming to lap... Out fuel mileage. Coming to lap 37, so... Uh, and let me see, where are they? They're... Well, there's a, a lot of uh, different numbers going on here. We got a couple guys with 30 laps, a couple guys with 28 laps, a couple guys with uh, 27 laps, 24 laps. So there's a bunch of different uh, fuel strategies going on here. Yeah, and the max they can do is 34 laps on fuel, apparently. Wow. So Art Peck, Adam Matz, uh, Stevens, Major, Barris, Solnier, Hollyfield, Yenish. Uh, Schultz, all these guys are around 30, coming to 31. If we stay green, these guys will be setting up for a, a green flag pit stop. Yep, yep. That ought to be interesting to see, too, with the way the trucks feel. And we have, looks like somebody coming down pit road, I believe. I was about to say, I noticed that Seth and uh, Stuart did back down for a little bit there, but now they're going back into full pace. So I thought they were about to try and do a pit stop there, but... They've gone back to full speed there, you know, right behind the leaders again. Yeah, especially if you're up in the outside line and you know you're getting close to uh, having to pit, you got to start working your way down. If you're up in the front, the only way down is to the back. Yep, yep. So, that's so I had a quick look. It looks like they're staying in line as well. But I'm wondering if the Jeff and Steve Yenich are kind of just eking out a little bit of fuel margin, maybe get an extra lap and pit one lap later. Yeah, because when you're back there, too, you're not full throttle. You don't have to be full throttle while these guys up in the front have to be. You can, you know, uh, three quarter, a little more than three quarter throttle it and still maintain. I believe we've seen these guys do it before as well. Look at Schultz again to the outside. They want to make it work. They just going to have to bide their time and wait, wait, wait for everything to go crazy and then make the move. For now, it's just going to be a bit of fuel march till time to bit. It's going to be about nailing that green flag stop, I believe. I'm curious to see how the how and when this is gonna happen. Trying to figure out what lap they uh, went green on. Yeah, we're at Art Pack right now is at 32 laps on that truck, as well as Mike Major, Adam Matz, uh, Sean yeah, Stevens. What the pace laps though? So. Yeah, so we got to be coming close though. Yeah, like they, they um, the caution happened lap 10. So the caution ended, sorry, lap 10, so yeah, they're getting close. Next next lap will be lap 30, so they've got about four more laps to go before they will probably have to fit the fuel. Look at Mark Jenkins back out front again. I gotta say, for Jason Miles, it feels like everything's going in slow motion. Yeah, there's nothing worse than being out there and uh, not even being with the pack. That, that's one of the most boring rides, especially with a damaged car or truck. Yeah, and even worse, like uh, James Brown was behind him as the pack went past, right? Mm -hmm. And after the pack left, J James Brown just pulled it to his outside and just drove away from him on his own. <laughs> it's, that is rough, man. That, that hurts. That makes you want to just park. The worst is if you're even more tired because the hum of the engine, man, just wants to make you go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've done it before. I speak from experience. Yeah, the quiet, just boring hum. You just hear that. <laughs> Yeah, there's nobody around you. Next thing you know, you're like, you're like, wow, wow, wow. You realize you, you closed your eyes for a couple of seconds. So Mike Major now up in the outside line by himself. Uh, 93 Desonier does go up. Yeah, it looks like he's going to let um, Rob Jenkins move up as well as uh, Bill Alt. Yeah, we might see he's guys. Have Mark and Rob Jenkins working together to see if they can make a move here. We might see guys start trying to line up here for... Uh, yeah, here we go. We got some guys coming yeah. down. 
Adam uh, Matz, going Art Peck. Well. Adam Matz. Oh, look at Matz locking them tires up. Yeah, Art, Art Peck, Mike Major, Adam Matz. Good run in. Yeah, looks like a, I think a Mike Major did a bit more calm than the other guys did. We'll watch their uh, time on there. See Mike Major already under service. Three seconds. Look yeah, at all I'd these. rather lose a second doing it slow than you know, lose like 20 seconds doing it too fast. So. And if you look at everybody, watch Mark Jenkins on back. Everybody now is single file, so I think everybody's coming in this lap. Yeah, and everyone's a bit spread out as well, so this might actually work. Yeah, here they come. Oh, somebody's going into the wall. One of the Yenish. I don't know, did he save it or not? Who was that? Uh, let me find him real quick. Let me change the camera and back up a second. Was it Steve Yenish? But unfortunately, he went straight past the pit lane, so he's now on his own. Yeah, oh man. From that, pretty much everyone went to the pits. I think Steve Yenish is the only guy who did it. He didn't really do it willingly. Yeah, I saw his truck go sideways, and uh, I thought he was up into the wall. He did the great save. What? The pits now. You see the fight <laughs> leaving pit row between these guys. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, flag pits, it's going to be a lot more brutal. Who was it? Uh, it was, I, think it was the, I think it was the 210 and the... 75 of Barris, yeah. Yeah, driving through each other, and I think even the 196 might have been a part of that, too. So right now, it looks like Barris is the leader of that pack, although uh, yeah, Yenich is uh, in the pits, so that should give it up to Barris. Yeah, but Barris is about to get passed by uh, Rob Jenkins. And oh, yeah, Bill. they're going by. I mean, there's only like four cars there, so this is the chance to make a move. I think it was Mark Jenkins as well, actually. He's on the outside. So you got two Jenkins brothers, and you got Bill Alt and Robert Barris there. This might seem a bit unfair for the guys. I like seeing this. You've got Mike Major and Art Peck, who I think are working together. Then you've got uh, Stewart and Schultz that are working together. I think we saw the two Yeniches that were together for a while until one made a mistake. Then you've got um, the two Yank Jenkins brothers. All these guys are kind of coming, to, coming through together. They definitely uh, sh shook up now, man. And here comes the 210 of Rob Jenkins. You see the 36 of uh, 35 of Mullis there in front of them. And you gotta hate being Steve Hanich right now. You got out the pits and look what he can I see. I know he's, he's kind of by himself, right? Yeah, there's no one around. Uh, that one mistake cost him. Oh, you know what? He still got a chance, and it's better. Uh, that he didn't hit the wall, because if he would have hit the wall, that would have been the end of it. He, he got close. Good save. And look at Barris. He and slid it all the way back to the pit entrance, but he, he decided, no, 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 I'm going to play it smart. And oh, Barris makes contact with... Who was that? The Bill 196. Oh, yeah. But Bill Alton, Barris. Oh, no caution, too. Oh, no. And Bill Alton, his engine is blown. He hit uh, one of the Let's other see. engines. Try and Jeff figure Yenich it out. is out too, I think. Oh, kind of, kind of hard to tell what happened here, man. Watching 75 of Barris. He's in the middle, three wide. He, oh, man, it almost looks like uh, like a little bit of net code, too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they, they I'm watching from. Was slowly, slowly sliding up. So it probably would have happened a second later, but yeah, net code definitely did not help that. Unfortunate. When you're going three wide, it's gonna happen sooner or later. Some guy's gonna make a mistake. And the yellow is out now. I was gonna say that would be. It's gonna be great for Jeff Yenich. He's not gonna be back in the pack, but sorry, sorry, not Jeff Yenich. Was the other Steve one? Yenich, Steve Yenich. Yeah. But unfortunately, his uh, tag partner, Jeff Yenich, is currently now in the pits with damage. So. Yeah, he uh, had really nowhere to go. And so he got what he want, but not how he wanted it. Definitely a, a big turn of events here. 
Yeah, that's going to be... Well, it goes to a good pace. Got taken out from that one. So we got 100 degrees on the track, so we went down 15 degrees. We're under uh, caution number two. It's 22 lead changes, dude, already. Can you believe it? I'm not surprised these guys fight hard. Oh, man. If you want to go back to that wreck, look what happened for Bill Alt, man. He goes just pretty much kamikaze to the outside wall. He's gonna let me back up enough with him. Let me see. Okay, we got him. Tries to save it and it just just yeets down the wall. There's nothing he can do. He's just gone. Yeah, I mean, like right up into the wall and then boom, down into the image. He didn't even see in his cockpit when he hits. It just he, He's trying to save it and all of a sudden it just throws him super hard to the right. There's just nothing he can do. All right, we got pitters pitting. The funny thing is, I think they just finished pitting, most of the guys did. <laughs> yeah, well, come in now, get yourself some fresh tires, man, because uh, this could be it, 30 laps to go. This could be the run to the end. Yeah, for fuel, this definitely will be. And there'll be no tires, no pit for tires. This is going to be one run to the end, unless cautions pop up, which is always a possibility. Oh, look at that. Hmm? Who's that? Rob Jenkins, 5.3. He didn't take tires. Yeah, he got a splash and go. Same thing, Adam Matt, 7.2. Uh, somebody else, too, Steve Yenich. No, can it? Yeah, Steve Yenich, 5.5. Same with Mark Jenkins as well. Yeah, we, no tires. We, we got some, uh, we definitely got some strategy going on now. Not too bad. 29 laps to go. We're only at the caution number two, which is very surprising considering uh, the way the trucks were feeling. So, uh, yeah. can I say get with no tires as well? I believe the Sony is taking rights. Did he take both sides or just rights? Give me a second. No, he took four. Never mind. Yeah, as I say, it looks like he took four. 14 six. Quickest one was Mark Jenkins 5.1. Then you got uh, Rob Jenkins 5.3. And uh, uh, Kenneth Sager at 5.5. And then everybody else is about in the 14s, one in the 15, so uh, two in the 15, actually, sorry. Not too bad. Yeah, unfortunately, Bill Alton has uh, put it behind the wall. Uh, Don't really blame him. That truck was, his engine was blown, he was done. Damn shame, because Bill, for your first race that I've seen, you've done really good. Yeah. That kind of happened. And it's Talladega. I mean, you kind of expect that on Talladega and uh, and Daytona. I mean, it's, it's a lot of things are not in your control during that race. Yeah, it just happens. But uh, should be good, man. Hopefully, uh, we'll see him next week in uh, Indianapolis in the uh, Cup Car Clocks by Christopher. That'd be pretty good. Speaking of Clocks by Christopher, let's uh, hear from Clocks by Christopher. Clocks by Christopher. <laughs> A proud sponsor of Die Hard Racing Week, located at 222 Turnpike Street, Southeastern Massachusetts, 02375. Restoration and repair of all clocks, buying and selling antique and modern clocks. Authorized Howard Miller Clock Dealer, Howard Miller, Ridgeway, and Ethan Allen Authorized Service Center. We ship all over the country. As for shipping quotes, low overhead means low prices. We give the personal service, the big stores can't. Sales, 508-944-9645. Service, 508-944-9273. Call now. It's Clocks by Christopher.com. Yeah, we got to give a uh, shout out to Clocks by Christopher.com for sponsoring at uh, Die Hard Racing League. Go check them out. Web page has been updated a little while back. Um, I'm telling you what, man, uh, they did a great job with the web page. I was on looking around, and uh, they're right. I mean, you can get on there, and uh, everything you want just right there. They got um, great customer satisfaction, quality repairs, um, quality clocks, anything you need, anything you want. and. Uh, I can't wait to see at the end of the season what the uh, champion picks. Oh yeah, the championship trophy, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, that, that's definitely awesome. I remember when they first announced it and I, I saw some of the pictures, I was like, wow, 
I wish I was out there running it, man, trying to get a chance to uh, grab myself <laughs> one. I'm glad I'm not because that, that way no one would see my incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did good, man. You did all right. You'll be okay. And then yeah. we... In circles. That, that, that's how you know it, right? You go in circles? I'm going to do a, a shameless plug here, but uh, oh, no. Wingnut has uh, challenged a couple of the guys here at uh, Die Hard Racing League to a race where Watkins Glen, right? Yep. And we're thinking about doing it on the 21st of September, yep. right? Yep, yep, the Saturday, 21st of September. Yeah, so we're uh, going to get it together. We're going to talk to the guys at uh, DRL. Hopefully we can get it streamed and uh, put it up because I think that would be pretty cool. Just a kind of a bragging right uh, kind of uh, race. Although uh, Wingnut is going to put up for the top three, uh, first, second, and third finisher of the race. So that should be pretty good. A lot of the guys, too, at DRL that we talked to have a, a big interest in it. And what cars are we going to be running, dude? We're going to be running the Australian Pro cars, mate. The Aussie V8 supercars. That's going to be we wicked. Like a birthday thing for me, just because why not? And the idea is, you know, we, we've been driving these, you know, trucks in ovals for the past year or so. Give a try at the V8 Supercars, run them on a track. And the good thing about the V8s for these guys is they pretty much drive the same as these things do. They have way too much power and not enough control. It's <laughs> awesome, a lot of fun. And we're going to do uh, Watkins Glen full course, right? Exactly. And the... the I, I lost you. You know what? Ah, uh, yeah. And the top three will get the price of the car paid off. Awesome. That is going to be... So you uh, bought the car for the race? You no, know, you bought the V8 Super car for the race, then you actually get the money back for it. So you got a free car, you had a good race, hopefully. Or you would have had a good race in the top three, wouldn't yeah, you? That's going to be wicked, dude. I can't wait. I got to uh, actually get out there and start getting some time in there now and uh, get the feel for these cars. Uh, it's, it's, it's like driving these things, man. Too much power, not enough control. Mm -hmm. right. I actually learned something new recently about them. They actually have locked rear diffs. Oh, really? Yeah, I did not know that. And that explains a lot of why they, how they drive. I was watching a race on TV not too long ago with uh, with the V8s. Uh, it was actually pretty interesting. I think it's on, um, I think it's Mav TV that we get now on our cable. Oh, okay. And uh, dude, they got they got racing on there almost 24/7. It's amazing. But they oh, uh, were showing the showing stuff up by your way, and I was like, dude, I wanted to message you and find out if it was anywhere near you too. <laughs> There's another little series that I found out about as well that I wish I racing would clone. It's called the Austra the Aussie Racing Cars. They are very small little things using 1400 cc motorbike engines. Really? And they're like little like funny car shape. Like essentially, they're kind of like uh, sort of sort of like your uh, your Legends like the series. Right. Except they you know the body shells can be whatever the hell you want. So people have got like you know foam Mustangs and stuff. Oh, that's gotta be pretty cool. Oh yeah, the, the racing is good. It's it's so awesome. But hey, pace cars about to go in, so get this restart going. Mark Jenkins on the inside. Rob Jenkins on the outside. This is going to be interesting to see. Are they going to work together or what? They got it. We've got half the race still to go. You can't go off half, co half cock and leave your uh, teammate behind. Yeah, it will be 26 laps to go once they take the green here. Oh, there goes Rob Jenkins. Wow. He got a great run there, but unfortunately... Uh, this is Talladega, yeah. yeah. You don't want a great run. That might hurt him because they could easily uh, slingshot past him. Being said, Mark Jenkins is the guy behind him, so he is not going to fly past him. Actually, he might, and let uh, Rob Jenkins grab the draft from him. We'll see if that's the case. 94 Kenneth Sager now up to fourth. Look at him on the inside there, man. And Adam Matt's going to go to the outside, I think, with Mike Major, maybe. They were doing good before. Go. No, the 94 is going to get there in time, maybe. No, he doesn't have the pace. He's going to be on his own. He comes up, Peck, in the 27 of, uh, I, think, I believe that's Steve Inich. And look at him, they I go to, yeah. Well. Oh, look at him. go four wide? No, he's not. Okay, thank God. <laughs> yeah, he was up Inich there with him. And, Peck and then going back to the inside, left Peck alone. Jesus, that is my. <laughs> oh. Don't worry, mate. I'm going to work with you. Psych. Yeah. I just wanted that position. <laughs> <laughs> Open the door. Open the door. I just want to talk. Picture. <laughs> I won't hurt you. Oh, look at uh, Mark Jenkins wiggling all over the rear of Rob Jenkins. Yeah. He's a bit more clean about that. 
And, uh, and Matt now flying the outside with Mike Major and with uh, Kenneth Sager behind him. And Sean Stevens right there. Kenneth Sager up in the front now. Steve Yenish up there in seventh. And don't forget, Yenish won the last race in the uh, Flatfoot Series at Daytona. Yes. Yeah, that was that was uh, an edge of a seat finish. I'm sure we're going to see one of them here tonight. We have to. Oh, oh, there oh go. no! Oh, Jenkins just turned. Rob Jenkins. They were oh, just too. Oh, Art loose. Pex destroyed too. Mike Major got caught in that. Adam Matz got caught in that. They all got massive hits. Kenneth Sagan took a hit. Looks like uh oh yeah, 36 of Art Peck got taken out. I don't know if anyone else got caught in that one, but man, that is brutal. And Mike Major is upside down. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's he's right, out. We're watching now. I, I I was I called it the last lap. I saw that Rob, Robin Mark Jenkins were not oh, quite straight. Man. Yeah, and that turn he turned right to the outside line just into everyone. Yeah, I gotta go back and we gotta watch from the uh, two. Watch the two there. You see the inside line, they make contact, the 210 gets pushed up into the 2. The 2 gets hit by the 36, gets stuck on the 210, and look at him rolling over. Oh, man, it's stuck. Yeah, right. that is brutal. Let's, uh, let's go in with him. Go. <laughs> I heard that. I know, uh, stupid thing. Wow! Yeah, let me go back with the roll bar. This is where you're locked in with him. You hear the tire scrub. Oh, where'd it go, retarded thing? Hang on. This thing keeps jumping off of the two. I hear you. I want to be on the two. You see him right behind Adam Matt's Boom, the 210 comes up. Nowhere to go. You don't even know what's happening. On the roof. Roll over and then back on the roof. Wow. I just want to say as well, we just heard from uh, uh, Mark Jenkins. He said, no, sorry, that guy was my fault, guys. He's apologizing to everyone. So good on him for that one. Yeah, I, I mean, you know. I do it straight away. What are you going to do? It happens, man. It's, you know. Just... Yeah, I, I will say, I'm glad I kind of called. I, I saw that they just couldn't get it great. And, you know, that, that try over, as we said before, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of bumps there, you get it wrong, and you just send the guy spinning. So with that, that puts Sean Stevens in the front, Kenneth Sager up to second, Seth Schultz up to third, uh, Steve Yen is going to be in fourth, Joshua Stewart in fifth, Robert Barris in sixth, Ron Hollyfield in seventh, James Brown, who I uh, believe he started the race, up in the front is up to eighth. Yep. Desonier in ninth. And we got Adam Lewis, Adam Matz. Uh, I believe Adam Lewis is actually a lap down at one point, if I remember correctly. I think I you're right. I think you're right. I think he uh I think he was able to get back on under the caution. Yeah, now he's in the top ten, though he has taken the pit stop here, so he will lose a few positions unless the guys behind him also pit. We had a couple guys come in. Let's see. Uh, we had a bunch of guys come in. It's going to be interesting to see because they will have a little bit fresher tires than some of these guys that are out there. I don't know how much of a difference that's going to make. Honestly. Yeah. Still I thought a few guys in the game to get repair, the damage repair. Like Seth Schultz has got an absolutely bent up rear end. Does he really? Oh. Yeah, there's, there's a nice car shaped dent in the rear. Might as well get as much of a bang down as he can. And yeah, you can see he actually got quite a few, bit of a bang down already. And look, we're down There's to 94 degrees, point. too. Yeah, she's slowly cooling down. It's getting, you know, it's just me, but it's getting darker as well. Yeah, it looks like it's getting a little bit darker out there. 25 lead changes. We're only on the caution number three. Still got 22 laps to go. Uh, we'll be counting them down. Uh, let's go to continuous, and uh, we'll be right back. Class by Christopher. A proud sponsor of Die Hard Racing Week, located at 222 Turnpike Street, Southeastern Massachusetts, 02375. Restoration and repair of all clocks, buying and selling antique and modern clocks. 
authorized Howard Miller clock dealer. Howard Miller, Ridgeway, and Ethan Allen authorized service center. We ship all over the country. As for shipping quotes, low overhead means low prices. We give the personal service the big stores can't. Sales, 508-944-9645. Service, 508-944-9645. Nine two seven three. Call now. It's clocks by Christopher dot com. What was your favorite track? Either Charlotte or Llama Land, I don't know. Yeah. So I, I guess we I should done. explain one thing. Zach is a racer. He's yeah. a late model racer. That's probably not always the case with iRacing and, and being a champion. That's the neatest thing that I love about iRacing is you don't have to be necessarily a racer. Yeah. iRacing will make you a racer. Let's go out and have some fun. Right. Sounds Let's good get in this, baby. We'll do. Comparisons are to the iRacing. It's pretty good. This track's like identical. I told I'll you tell that. It yeah. looks, I mean, get on it, feels pretty familiar. It's unbelievable. Every time, I mean, literally, I, I've been on a lot of dirt tracks, obviously, but I've been on a lot of all the cut tracks, and right. not asphalt stuff, road track, road track. It, it just, it's crazy how detailed it really is. Oh, yeah, the shape, from, everything. And when I race this, on iRacing, I have the same problems. Like, right. if, if the guy's ripping the wall, it's hard to pass. It's really hard to pass. And I'm something. telling you, it's it's exactly the same way yeah. when you're in the real thing. Hey, I'm Clint Boyer. We're here at Charlotte Motor Speedway with the iRacing World Champion, Zach Leonardi. Let me tell you something. That's a racing name. <laughs> He's the champion, folks, and you can be right here with me next year. All right, we were there with uh, Clint Boyer and uh, one of the iRace champions of the dirt doing a little bit of talking there. Dirt tracks are always fun, but you really do need three monitors or VR to make that work because you need to be able to see to your far left. It just doesn't work otherwise. And your far right. Yeah, VR is, I'm telling you, I've, since I've started racing with VR, I can't drive without it. I love it. Just stop telling me, man. I'm so jealous. So <laughs> wanted. So bad. All right, so this should be pretty interesting. Oh, we just lost somebody. Hang on. Now he's back. Sean Stevens had a bit of a blink there. Yeah, he's, oh, he's kind of blinking here and there. Let's see. Should steady out. Sometimes guys have a little bit of trouble with the connection for some reason under caution. But then once we go back green, it usually steadies out. Hopefully it does because he's in a good spot right now. We'll be uh, 19 laps to go. Obviously, that's still quite a ways here at this track uh, with the amount of uh, distance, you know, from, from line to line. But um, this could be it, man. 
This could definitely be it for sure. And Steve yep. Yenish starting in ninth. He was the last winner. So we'll see if he's able to do a back-to-back -back here. And yeah, Barris is now back up to the front line. We got James Brown, who fell back quite a bit. He's now back in the second row again. Ron Holfield is sitting in third, which is awesome to see. Yeah, he's having he's a good run here tonight. He was a big victim of bad luck for a little while, but it seems to uh, hopefully have straightened out a little bit for him tonight. Still ain't over. Oh, yeah. Also, I've been kind of surprised by Kenneth Sagan today. He's done a really good run. He actually got up to the top three there fighting it out, so it's good to see. Yeah. All right, pace cars in. This could be the final start for tonight. Sean Stevens down on the inside, Robert Barris on the outside. Let's see who's going to be able to take it around and lead this lap. Remember, Sean is also a rookie to the league as well, which is great. Yeah, he's doing really good here tonight, man. He's pretty steady, too. All right. Better run, but we've seen that every single restart. I think Steven should be able to hold on with the uh, run hopeful behind him. Yeah, we haven't seen uh, much with Hollyfield just yet, so I'm not sure. It looks like he's pretty steady. It looks like so far the truck's been all right, but uh, still a little early to tell. Yeah, and the good thing for Holyfield as well is this truck is not even damaged. It, it's perfectly straight, so we get the maximum amount of the, out of that truck as he can. I see he's already starting to give uh, Stevens a good push, and. Uh, Brown doing the exact same thing for Barris, so we're going to see a nice little race to the end. Yeah, I feel back off a little bit into the turn, let the guy get uh, some control over that truck. Got to watch. I'm keeping an eye. Oh, wow, look at James Brown. That was a really, really aggressive move there. Yeah. Almost chopped uh, Patrick to his nose off. He filled that hole up quick. Oh, yeah, that leaves Barris alone. Look at Seth Schultz on the outside again, but this time with <laughs> Steve, Steve Yenich. Yeah, Steve Yenich, no, he's no stranger to victory lane here, man. And this is the time to make it work. And now DeSoni getting in front of Barris now. I was going to say, Seth was hoping for that middle lane to kind of die out. That way he could push forward. Now they've got three cars there. Look at that. Stewart, Yenich, and uh, Seth. They might be able to make that outside line work if they've got these three cars together. Meanwhile, Sean the Stevens. Moment, the inside line is so many trucks. Stevens still up there in the front. He's got Ron Hollyfield right behind him. The Sonier is slowly closing in with Barris. See if Schultz and them can get back to uh, the back bumper of Barris and make that outside line a little bit more thick. Yeah, I definitely slotted behind Barris and, um, who was that in front of him, sorry. Barris and Sony slotted behind, get as much run as you can, then go for your outside line lunge. You get as much pace as humanly possible. Yeah, try and take some of that uh, steam off of them. Exactly, yeah, try and get it on this back, I think maybe try this back stretch, he's getting a pretty good run, he might give it a try. Oh, there he goes. I don't know, that was a bit too early, I think he didn't get the run he could have gotten there. Could have got a bit more out of that. Yeah, they might they stall out. Push. Exactly, yeah. He needed to get a little bit more draft and then just like slingshot past. Yeah, we might have to tuck it back down and start it over again, but that's uh, that's good to know, man, because when it gets down to crunch time, they got to know what they can do. Uh, this part here might be the time we can make it. Oh, look at Barris. And look at Seth. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, we're not, we're not working with you, good sir. Oh, good man. Good look at Barris hung out the dry out there. That's kind of the problem with being Barris, you know, he's a damn good driver and he's always always in the lead or in the f top of somewhere, so in a race like this, if you got a chance to help him, you just don't. Wow. <laughs> you don't, don't, don't let him take the win. Oh, look at Schultz. Here's the target. Yeah. Now the is alone. This is the moment to make the outside line strike. And, oh, look at Seth almost loses it there. Wow. But at least Yenich and Seth can now slot in below if they decide to, but they're still staying out there and Barris is now slotting back in behind the Sonya. That there was the chance. They just they pretty much destroyed the, the secondary line. Was able to make a rip. Now here comes the Sonya and Barris, and, and that middle line's gonna come back like a, with a fury. Yeah, look at that man. I'm, I'm surprised with just the two trucks. Now Schultz gonna be left out there. Yeah, Yenich yeah, is like, nope. I'm gonna grab onto this ride. Now Schultz is with the 22. We saw them together earlier. Look at the run Barris and the Sonya are getting though. Wow, yeah. they went straight up to the lead. 
leaders again. They went from like fifth, sixth position to firing it out with first. Yeah, and look at Yenish going to get on the back of there too. You're going to have more on the outside up towards the front than you will uh, down on the inside. Just just look at Barris and the Sonya. That is so perfect. Barris is just sitting essentially on the bumper. Yeah, that is really steady. Very push is enough. That is beautifully done. No, no like, random. There's no hard bump for falling off. He's just sitting there. That is perfect. Oh, look at him. He's going to jump down. <laughs> and then Barris drops him like, drops him like a wet down. Wow. And look at that outside line. Yep. Steve Yanish going towards the front. Not quite at the pace. The inside line's going to win it again. Oh, he's got to hang on to Schultz. Yep, and then look at that, look at that three car push there. It's, it's always dangerous to do, do that. It's always dangerous to push the pusher, but they're, they're doing their best to make it work. Yeah, you. They can still the middle line there. They don't need to stay in the outside line anymore. I'd, I'd slide down for sure. The Yenis gets down there. Oh, no. Oh, 22 Stewart into the wall. Hey, he grabbed onto the wall and just got ground along it. And here it comes. Well, about his teammate. Yep, and here comes Desonia now back to the outside line. So it'll be Desonia, uh, Yenich, and Schultz if he can catch up to them. Oh, Desonia trying to take some of that inside line with him. Now, uh, Steve Yenich out there by himself. Like somebody come out here, let's go, let's play. Nope, they're going to go single file for a little bit, which is probably good. I mean, it's still 13 laps to go. It sounds like it's not a whole lot, but it is. Yeah, to be honest, there's not really enough cars right at the moment to really make an aggressive move. We're seeing Desonia make, like, making motion like he looks like he wants to do it. Same with Kenneseg. We might see a move tried here, and so Desonia is now on the outside. You know? Yeah, this, this is where Sean Stevens is going to poke out. Sean Stevens, go out right now, mate. Here's your chance. You get the lead back. And Schultz is going to catch up to the back end, so we're going to have three of them on the outside. Making some back. headway. It's a little leapfrog maneuver over and over there, and Stevens could have done the same thing. He could have leapfrogged past Barris, get the lead back, but I think he's going to just stay right there for now. Yeah, I think he knows. That it's still, I mean, even though it says there's 12 laps to go, it's, that's a long ways here, man. Yeah. Yeah. Even four laps to go is still a lot. So many things can happen in four laps. You got to be around at the end if you want to win it, you know. So uh, it's always good when you see guys kind of see that opening, but figure, you know, let me let me hold off a little bit longer. Look at that run the Sony is getting with uh, Kenneth Sega and Seth Schultz. That is doing really, really well. They're, they're getting a bit uh, untidy and wiggling, but they're still managing to hold on to this and make this run work. So we're going to have five on the inside and four on the outside. So that's, that's a pretty good uh, split. Yeah, all you really need is three. After, after three, it's just a bonus. Look at that now. Now it's just two cars again. Oh, and is Yenich going to uh, leave Schultz out there? Yep, Schultz going to have to jump in back behind Yenich. Oh, well, watch, I was just saying, he got loose, managed to hold on to it. They're going to lose their pace. Thankfully, Yenich saw that from Sega and did not th hold the throttle down. He let off the throttle, let him gain it again, and kept going. Yeah. That could have been another incident. Yeah, that could have been really bad. What is, is Seth going to go three wide there? <laughs> <laughs> looked like he was going to... Like, looked like he was going to try to squeeze it in, but he, I think it's just the uh, angle here. I'm curious if Ron Holt was going to try and go for the outside line, but I don't think it's really worth it for him. No, I think he's happy right where he is right now. Just let me let me wind out some more of these laps. Unless Sean Stevens goes with him. If Stevens goes out, I think Hoffman will go out as well. That way they can leave Barris with a massive gap behind him. Get for that go for the one two between them. That's a gamble though. Yeah. This ain't yeah. Vegas, you know what I mean? <laughs> my, my knowledge of uh, American geography is really bad, so I'm gonna say it's pretty close. <laughs> I know it's not actually close, yeah. so no one please murder me. It's fine. But just by just by the uh, rolling the dice here, we're going to be nine laps to go this time by, man, and the heat is on. These guys are really fighting now. Yeah, if you're Adam Lewis, if you're Kenneth Sager, if you're James Brown, 
if you're Steve Yenich, you got to start making some aggressive move to get near the front. You're seeing Seth Schultz and uh, Sonya again up the front. And Schultz has been all over the board here these last couple laps, huh? Yeah, every time he falls back, he just gets a really good run, just flies back to the front again. That being said, they're getting a little bit of a lead on, but they need to get that push again, because here comes Barris on the inside with uh, Stevens again. Stevens doing a really, really good job of just cleanly pushing Barris around the track. Yeah, they, they get a great run in, and a good run off right here now, too. Might just need one more car on the outside line, all for Stevens to betray Barris and take the outside line as well. But hey, we've got, to, what is it, eight laps to go? That's a lot of tarmac left. Yeah, we still, I mean, once we get down to about four to three to go, man, I think that's when the gloves are going to come off. That again as well, you know, if your name's Sean Stevens and you're currently a rookie to the league, a second place is a pretty good place to finish, right? Yeah, not a bad, <laughs> not a bad finish at all. Good way to show uh, that you're here. Absolutely. Oh, and a bit of a bit of an unsettled uh, push there for uh, Stevens. Yeah. Got a bit of an, like an uneven shunt from Holton. That might have been enough. And it is. The Sonia steals the lead from Barris. Leaves Seth on the out Seth on the outside. Wow. But keep an eye on Barris. The Barris is known for this. He, he might slot to the outside line immediately. And grab Schultz. Yep. And there he goes. Immediately. Now you're gonna have Stevens pushing uh, the So this may work for the Sonia's advantage. Oh, what's Schultz doing? It's almost like Schultz and Barris have something against each other tonight. Ah, uh, I think Seth just knows if he pushes Barris, there is no chance of him winning. <laughs> that being said, that is not going to work for Seth though. He's going to fall right back to the back of this pack again. Yeah. And with only what is that? Six laps to go. Yeah, with six laps to go this Inch. time. Yeah, to the high line as well. Yenish, I know Yenish really wants to do a back-to-back, -back, man. Oh, he's going to be pushing as hard as he can near the end for sure, but it's still a little too early. Yeah, look at the zone out there. Two laps led out in the front. As we slowly wind these laps down, be six to go this time by. Barris all the way to the top. Barris with Schultz now. Let's see. Is Schultz going to stay with him? <laughs> I think at this point, if he does, Barris is not going to trust him anyway, so... There's going to be a point where, yep, straight away he's going to leave Schultz behind. <laughs> oh. okay, well, he kind of comes piece. back out. Yeah. I thought he was just going to get in line and slam the door on Seth, but he does not. Oh, he stays look, out again. Look, oh, look like Seth is getting ready to go in and leave him out there. Man, I don't know, dude. Yeah, the trust is not there today. <laughs> they're just having a really hard race. And there goes Seth again to the outs. <laughs> he tries it again. It looks like uh, Steve Yenich can be kingmaker here and pick who gets the win. And meanwhile, DeSonia doing a really good job staying out front. Uh, Sean Stevens really showing, man, that he's uh, got a, a really good driving uh, skill here. Yeah, the main thing he's doing right now, which I'm loving, he's got a cool head on his shoulders. He is not making any aggressive moves. He's not like going down the line leapfrogging. He's just sitting there and waiting. All right, we're at five to go. Count off about two more laps, and then I think the whole thing's going to change. Oh, yeah. Because if you go, you know, one thing you learn from driving on these uh, super speedways like this, if you go too soon, it'll hurt you. You can't wait yeah. too long. There's that sweet spot that you have to get it done. But, you know, a guy see five to go and right away, you know, in your mind, you're thinking, man, five to go, I got to go. No, not yet. It's not time. Just wait, wait, wait. Yeah. That being said as well, if you're in like a sixth position or worse, you want to get to at least the top three to make that final move. So. Mm -hmm. We might see some guys further back, like Seth and Yanish, try and make a really hard push to get to this front pack, and then we'll have the final lap fight, you know? All right, four to go now this time by. I say the next lap by, you got to you got to start really positioning yourself. Now, if you look very carefully, you might be able to see the guys slowly pulling their gloves off in their cars right now. And look at Barris and Yanish, man, and uh, Schultz. Sager. They're starting to make a run back yeah. to Lee's again. Starting to really tighten up that outside line. See, here goes Schultz going to try to go to the outside, but I don't know, man. That outside line, we've seen it stall out a bunch of times. Yeah, he, and even even when he had Yenich and no one helping Barris, he still could not make a move on Barris. Yeah, so it's... it's oh. oh, oh. He now stuck Yenich to the outside line. Yeah, and he's committed he's now, to, now. The, to the middle. Oh, look at oh, the Sony. Did Sony just block? Whoa. Oh, no, 
my god, the Sony just stole that from facing the outside line. He's got three laps to go and he's already playing defensive. That was crazy right there. Look at him jumping down on the inside now. Yeah, you gotta make the move sooner or later. It's gonna be a bit aggressive. Wow. I'll tell you what, two good moves right there. Oh, look at Ferris and Seth. Oh. Ferris and Seth as well to stop him from doing it. Yeah, people are starting to throw a little bit of blocks here and there. Yeah, not, Seth not caught a little out. bit of the wall on that one too. Look at him. Oh, he almost gets into uh, the 68 there. James Brown. Oh, we got somebody going around. Hope the caution don't come out. Adam Lewis, and no, he's going to lose control of it. The caution's going to pop up. There's nothing he can do. I don't know, he's off, he's off track. He's off track. He's going to stay green, I think. Oh, come on, guys. Keep it green. Look this again, is... again. Yanis is trying to get the run there, but unfortunately, Holford had a bit of a wiggle, and that, that robbed uh, Yanis of the speed. And Schultz right back there again one more time. I don't know what he's trying to do here, but he keeps going to that top, top. He's got nowhere else oh, to go. Oh, no, and he's, that's it. Oh, that's it. And there's the caution. Oh, that is it. Oh, man. And Dissonia does not want this. No. That is not what he wanted. He was one lap away. Oh. One extra lap away from the win. I got to go back and look at that. Oh, man, it seemed like... I don't know, it seemed like Barris and uh, Schultz got to lose something going on here, man, because uh, watch this right here. Like, Barris went up to try to get in that line, and I don't know, it seemed like they were trying not to let him in almost, you know what I mean? Yeah, Barris was, was almost looked like Barris was trying to block the high line there, but as he did it, it looks like uh, Genich was trying to get below him, and then Barris like, came down. So maybe Barris wasn't trying to block the high line, but just perhaps. I think he was, he was just trying to grab it. And then he gets yeah, he hit. Just he, wanted to. he gets hit, and then Yemish, out of all of them, was uh, lost the control. You go back with uh, Barris too and see. Hold on. Let's drive with Barris for a second and see. See Barris down there. They're getting ready to go on the outside. He kind of goes up with them. A little unstable, but when uh, 27 hits him, Barris stays right there. Wow. Now wait, let me find Schultz and let's go one time with Schultz. Yeah, it looks a little bit like when Barris was finishing his turn there, it kind of slid out a little bit and he, you, know, you see him actually at the counter steer for a moment, so... I, I don't think that was really a block. I think it's just kind of a bit of a bad location. We'll see. Yeah, let's see right there. Oh, 27 right up in front of Schultz. Oh, man. I don't think anyone's putting for tires here, like at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. No, I wouldn't. I mean, unless you're like Josh Stewart, perhaps, who's way far back, just get some freshies on it. Oh, there's actually a few guys going in. Stewart, then we got uh, Lewis, and we got uh, Seth going in, Janich is going in. So, yeah, the back up part of this uh, pack did indeed pit. Let me take a quick look. Wow, we are down to uh, 88 degrees on the track. That's a big difference from 115 at the start. We had 30 lead changes. We're under caution number four, three laps to go, so we should see a green-white checker here. Crazy, man. I'll tell you what, exciting finishes, man, so far in this series. Been some really good, exciting finishes going on. You got Patrick DeSonio now up here. He's got nine laps led. Let's take a quick look where he uh, started. He started 11, so uh, pretty good, man. Get up here, got nine laps led. Uh, possibility he could come out with the win, but you know, anything can happen still. We still got a long ways to go. And then you got uh, John Stevens, who started seventh. He's currently sitting up here in second. And then let's look at go to our man, Ron Hollyfield. Look at Ron Hollyfield. Started tenth and he's sitting third. I mean, so it could be anybody still at this point.
live from Talladega. Don't forget, next week we'll be at Indianapolis in the Clocks by Christopher Cup Series. Uh, Indy's a really good track. I like Indy. Bad thing with Indy, cautions are long. You can eat your lunch, yeah. do your taxes, and you know, a bunch That's of other serious. things. Yeah. That's the only bad thing with uh, that, Pocono, Talladega, Daytona. Some of those caution laps are just, man, they're like sleeper laps, you know? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Miss something? Exactly. Okay, so, you got, you got, no, pretty much check this here. I'm going to ask you now, who's your bet? Who are you putting it on? Uh, let me see once they cross the line and see how they line up. Because I think it's going to be somebody a little bit further back. Well, I'll go for a random guess on you. Sean Stevens. Quite possible. He's the entire time. And he's been playing it quiet the entire time. He just kept his car straight and just kept pushing people around. But now he's going to be on the front row, on the outside line, probably. Because I'm willing to bet where someone's going to go low line. And he's going to have Robert Barris behind him, too. So Barris is going to want to try and get to the front, but he's got to push push Sean to get there. And if Sean plays his cards right, he can use Barris against himself and get that win. So uh, my money's on Sean pulling something out of there. But to be honest, that's that's my hopeful bet, I'd say. Now, see, I'm thinking I'm going to go a little bit further back because I think the wreck is going to happen up in the front. I'd like to see, like, what I could see playing out of my mind is the wreck happening and the one slipping by. But I think, unfortunately, if the wreck does happen, I think the one's going to get caught in it. I'm going to say James Brown is probably going to be the one to avoid it and come out in the front. I mean, he is Mr. Flatfoot. Every wreck, he keeps his foot to the floor. So that might actually work in such a situation. This, it, this is the time where foot to the floor does actually kind of make sense. Yeah, and, and you know up in the front, the soldier is going to be doing everything he can to try to hold on to that position. If he tries to go up and block and doesn't get it correct and gets turned, he could be right back down into the 126. I know the one is going to want to avoid it, but you're flat-footed. So, I mean, uh, How much man, you can do, yeah. Yeah, so the, the guy who's going to have the best chance for that is going to be like Brown or Sagert because they're going to be far enough back that they might be able to avoid it. I, you know, and then I could be totally wrong. It goes green all the way to the end and none of that even happens. Yeah, it could be that the song he just holds them off. Could just be that he does manage to like you know, lightly block the outside line and keep uh, whoever's on his inside from getting away. And we saw the song here a couple laps back go up to the outside and get in front of yeah. Barris, take that, and then jump back down in front of the 126. So, I mean, he's definitely watching. Yeah, he can. He can. De he definitely managed to throw a very clean block before. So if he can do that again. That being said, though, we're near the final uh, laps. I get the feeling no one's going to be happy with him doing that, and they're going to keep trying to pass him and maybe even turn him. So and this is going to be a brutal few, last few laps for sure. And I, I wonder how many – we might have three attempts. Uh, I'm hoping not. Yeah. I, I'm hoping. Talladega cautions are long enough, please, and thank I you. I know. Oh. Dude, these are sleeper laps. Yeah, we have to just uh, tighten up the belts and see because the lights are out. And DeSonia is going to stay on the inside. Look at you've got Sean Stevens up in the top lane now with uh, Barris behind him. you got Hollyfield behind uh, DeSonia, which I didn't take that. For some reason, I, I, I had in my mind the 126 being behind DeSonia and then Hollyfield. So I don't know, man. I could change it. But I'm still, I'm still thinking the 68 or the 94, I think they're far enough back that they can avoid it, maybe even further back from them. I will say, it would be awesome to get Kenneth Sager to get a win on this one. Yeah, he's, he had, he's been fast enough. He's been in the way. I, I don't really see Kenneth Sager up here, up here too much. It's great to see him up in the front fight and actually maybe even getting the win on it. Yeah, and look, yeah, he started 12th. He started yeah. 12th here tonight, so yeah. I don't know, brother. Toss Nothing that coin. Well, Even though it's a very short run, Seth Schultz and Josh Stewart are together again. I know. That. I was looking at that. and Even though Schultz got a little bit of damage, he's behind uh, Stewart. So he can possibly push Stewart if he doesn't have any engine damage. He can probably push Stewart up towards the front. As I said at the start, Stewart does have one person who is working with him, and that is indeed Seth Schultz. 
So mm. I think that that, that deal is going to run to the end. I think they're going to work together all the way through. They need to to get uh, Hades yeah. sort of podium together. And you know what? Shellstruck don't look too bad. Yeah, he's fixed his rear end damage. The front end damage I can see isn't really that much. It's of an not issue. too bad. If he tucks up under the 22, I mean that'll block that right off. Yeah, but he's, they have to find a gap to slam those two cars through within two laps. It's it's going to be an absolute uh, Charlie Fox drop. Mm -hmm. All right, brother, we're there. Yeah, here we go. His See car is Coldwell. making the way off. Let's see if we're going to be on the edge of the seat or standing up. Uh, are you sitting down still? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hard for me to stand up. I got too many things attached to me right now. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> we got microphones, heads, wires, cables. All right. There it is. Clean start for everyone. Oh, look at the 126 and Barris with a great start. It looked like the 93 wow. might have spun a little bit. Yeah, good Lola. Go oh, Lola. look at Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Bump on the oval. That means Steve is now the inside. Barris is now alone on the outside. He's got some help from uh, Kenneth Sega. You might see the Sony go to the high line. No, the Sony might not allow. Oh, Sony oh. going to the low line. He's going to steal the low line away from Stevens. Wow. He sticks his nose right down the inside. The gloves are off. No yeah. more playing friendly anymore. Now we're going to see DeSonia throwing any blocks in this next uh, next lap. He's, he might have to block the outside line at least once here. He might have to do it. He does not. He stays on the inside. I was going to say, if he Look blocks it, again. if he blocks it, that opens it up for Hollyfield to get in. Look at that run that outside line again. Barris, once again, just doing a really good job pushing. Here comes James Brown to the out high line as well. Wow, they are trying. At the moment, Sean Stevens has it, has the car ahead at the moment. If he can slot in front of uh, Desoni, this could be an absolute upset. Yeah, he needs to he needs to jump down right now, but he's going to take Barris with him. Ah, uh, slot down now, yes. Yep. Slot down, yes. Sony is not happy with that, but he's got nowhere to go now. He can't get underneath Sean Stevens. Oh, oh look at it. He can't go high. He can't go low. Oh, he's lost his pace. That, that, that might actually cost him right there. Holofield, go high. Come on, buddy. Yeah, Holofield's going high. So, so is the Sonya. Looks like Stevens has still kind of got his nose ahead. Wow, this is going to be three. Oh, no, they go around. The Sonya is going to get it. Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was crazy. I think Sean Stevens still got third. Uh, Yeah, they're marking him as third. I got to go back and see that. He Hang got on. Third. Oh my God. <laughs> I got to see that. Yeah. Hold on. Let's take a better look. There, but I think Stevens came down a tiny little bit, and that was all it took. Oh, the 22 got into the back of him. Yeah, he came flying from a mile back. He was gonna try yeah, to he was going to try to get underneath him, and just nowhere to go. Makes a little bit of contact with him, and around they go. That'll be rough, though, because technically he kind of cost the rookie his win there, but it happens. That, that's NASCAR for you. Wow. Everyone's fighting for that little tiny bit of real estate. Steve Barris. Yeah. Just right now. That's crazy, man. All right, so you got Patrick DeSonier with the win here tonight. 13 laps led. Pretty good, I'd say, huh? Yeah. That, that ch final chase of the finish, man, that's just absolutely glorious. That's play track for racing for you right there. And he's got the uh, clocks by Christopher Silverado, too. So uh, that's pretty good, man. You get clocks by Christopher up there in the uh, top spot here tonight. Looks like Robert Bear is going to finish second. Sean Stevens with a uh, third place finish. Sean Stevens in team speak? Yeah, so we'll get a word in with him too. Awesome. Yeah. Let's uh, let's see if we can grab him. Give me a second here. Let me find him first. 
third place, right? Yeah. All right, hey, Sean Stevens, this is the SR booth. You got a copy? Yeah, sure do. Hey, man, uh, dude, what a run for you tonight, man. Uh, definitely showed that you got some uh, good driving skills, some uh, skills, some patience. Uh, man, almost got away with the win here, too. That was some great moves at the end, man. Uh, talk us through that last restart. Yeah, I just, uh, just trying to pick a lane and, you know, not try to block, but just try to get some drafting and side drafting. And I seen Patrick come to the outside, so I drifted up a little bit. And then I seen the 22 come flying down on the inside and just trying to, trying to, you know, stay in between. But, you know, I got, I got hit, but it was just a racing incident, nothing big. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man, uh, we weren't really sure what was going to happen at the end. We had a couple different scenarios that we were playing out up here. But, man, I'll tell you what, dude, that was a great run. Uh, see so you get up there and uh, we thought we, you, you really were going to get away with it, man. Uh, but not bad. You started seventh. you got up, you got some, uh, laps and, uh, almost a win here, man. Uh, definitely showing that you, uh, got some talent here, man. Uh, great run. Um, how'd the truck feel out there for you? I know in the beginning guys were saying the truck really felt slippery. Uh, temperatures dropped towards the end. Could you feel the truck getting any more grip towards the end? Yeah, at the beginning it was it was real loose. Um, I just biding my time, but I, you know, as the temperature dropped, you can you can put it wherever you wanted to put it. Awesome, man. Uh, next week is going to be Indianapolis in the uh, Cup card. Are you uh, running in the Cup Series, the Clocks by Christopher Cup Series? Yeah, I just joined the league. Uh, my first race was there at Pocono. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try to run as much as I can. Awesome. Yeah, hopefully we'll. Uh... We couldn't get on uh, last week in time to uh, get the broadcast up, but we'll be here next week for Indianapolis, man. We look forward to seeing what you got in the uh, cup car. But a great run for you tonight, man. Uh, welcome to the league, and uh, glad to have you on board. Uh, at least even with that finish, you know, we knew it was going to be uh, an edge of a seat kind of a finish. At least you managed to get across the line and still hold on a third, man. So that's uh, really good for you, bud. Yeah, appreciate it, and thanks for broadcasting. It's it's pretty neat to listen to it. Yeah, awesome. Hey, uh, before we let you go, anybody you want to give a shout out to? Oh, I'll just give a shout out to my son, who's down in Ohio University in Athens. I know he was watching. So, all right, man. All right, well, listen, dude. Welcome aboard. Uh, glad to be able to get a word in with you, and uh, we'll look for you in Indianapolis. Maybe we will get you out there on the uh, podium, man, with the check and flag. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, have a good night, buddy. Go celebrate. I will. Thanks. All right. That was your third place. Uh, I believe this is what his second, uh, second race here with them, right? I mean, it's the first I've seen, but he may have been racing last week. When we yeah, we couldn't make it. He said he, was, yeah, he said he was at Pocono. All right. Okay. Uh, Robert Barris, you want to get a word in with him? No, no, I'm stealing Patrick, mate. All right. Let me grab Robert then. Yes, All right. Mr. Robert Barris, sorry to bother you, buddy. You got the SR booth. You got a copy. Yes, sir. I got you. All right, dude. First of all, that was crazy. Uh, 13th place start, 12 laps led. You come here in second. Dude, I, I don't know what was going on out there, but uh, we got to ask you, is there anything going on with you and uh, Schultz? Because it seemed like every time you guys got around each other, I don't know, man, like you, like you guys didn't want to be with each other or something. Yeah, uh, I noticed that. Um, it seemed like every time um, we had – combined momentum that uh, he was switching lanes you know he was he was not taking the momentum i had which a couple times it it, it seemed uh, a little weird because it, it seemed like it hurt both of us um not just like one of us but um just talking with him it sounded like more just, just anything like uh the points are pretty tight and so he he was trying his best to get me shuffled back and i was doing my best to to stay uh in front of the pack i knew especially at the end there um him and uh i think it was steve Yenis, yeah steve Yenis, yep. they were you know he was trying to get steve to make a move and you know i was doing everything i could because i knew if, if those two got past me there wasn't anything left i wasn't going to get back up there uh so i was i was doing everything i could and um i know i don't i gotta go back and look and see what happened to steve i, I saw that 
uh, he got he got wrecked and and I got Seth. So I, you know, I don't like that for them. It's not what I'm trying to do. Um, I felt like the block was in time and it was square, um, but it may have been enough with older tires that got him a little out of shape. And and then with Seth on top of him, they just may have not had enough room to to get it gathered back up. But other than that, um, it was a it was a race. Uh, qualifying was screwed up. Um, I, I thought they had a little bug. It used to be a bug that I thought was fixed where if you rolled off pit road and you pass the start finish line, that would begin your outlap. And so if you reset and you came back out right as soon as you came out of the pits, it would start your first time's lap. And I thought they fixed it. And when I rolled out of the pits, it still said lap zero. But when I got to the start finish line, it gave me lap one or two and it gave me the white flag. So uh, that, that was the deal with qualifying. Um, and while we had to start where we were, I guess, you know, in the end, it kind of worked out because I, I was able to save a bunch of fuel running in the middle, in the mid pack. And, um, if we wouldn't have had the cautions in that last 30 or so laps, I, I think everybody was going to be really close on fuel, but I think I was, I was probably in the best spot just cause I, I recognized it really at the start of the race. And that first caution we had gave everybody the opportunity to top off, but you still had to be really aggressive fuel saving from that point to make it a one stop. But the way the cautions felt didn't really matter. So all in all, we'll, uh, we'll take a second place out of here um, and move on to Indianapolis next week. Yeah, it was definitely uh, a, an end of the seat finish again, man. Uh, just like the last race to at Daytona, man, just like, uh, like the pressure was on. We had so many different scenarios that we saw going on up here, man. But uh, we were just like, man, I, like I was telling Wingnut, I said, man, something got to be going on. I said, and I guess, you you know, with the points being that close, I can understand why uh, he really didn't want to work with you and uh, have you get out in front of him, man. But I'll tell you what, considering, you know, from us hearing that the trucks were uh, pretty slick at the start, you know, the temperature did drop quite a bit uh, towards the end of the race. Um, you guys did a great job, man, running. Uh, you were kind of all over the board for a little bit. And then, man, we've seen you come back right up to the front. And, uh, man, what an exciting finish. That was just insane. Yeah, I mean, it was, I think overall, it was a, it was a pretty good Talladega race in the trucks. The, uh, I, I did kind of expect the handling to take a little bit bigger importance than it, than it did. But the, the trucks kind of settled out and, um, I think we also spread out a little bit, so that helped. We, for the most part, weren't right on top of each other, so you had a little bit of, of room to kind of gather it back up if you needed to. Um, other than that, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll take this iRacing. Uh, I think we're going to put this uh, this uh, iRacing truck in the garage for a couple weeks, and uh, we're going to bring back the Z01 for Indy. Nice. Uh, shout out, thanks to uh, uh, Apex Button Box and Clocks by Christopher, um tampa suv rentals for sponsoring the race today sr broadcasting um i racing obviously i like to thank them for you know this platform that they've built that enables people like me who can't just there's just no physical way i could do this i could ear and balance and eye problems there's just no way i could do it for real um everybody in the league who comes out and and races and hopefully above and all has a fun time yeah, yeah, and you guys always put on great races, man. So it's uh, it's always fun to watch. And like I said, man, uh, even a couple of weeks ago at Daytona, man, the finish there, we were on the edge of the seat. Same thing again tonight, man, edge of the seat. So uh, hats off to you guys, man. Not bad, Thir 13th place start, uh, 12 laps led, second place finish, uh, able to uh, stay pretty decent in the points. And uh, congratulations, dude. We'll look for you next week at Indy and see what you got over there in the uh, A car. Oh, uh, thank you. Looking forward to it. I love running Indy. So it's, it's blast. I'm kind of interested to see what this package, you know, the cut package puts on there, but um, it's usually a good time. Yeah, it's been a while too since I've been in the uh, A car and especially at Indy with this new package. So I have no clue what we're in for, but I'm sure uh, you guys will do a good job, man. Put on a good race for everybody. Yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll get in there really early and try to maximize all of our practice time that we get. And, uh, and hopefully that'll carry over to qualifying and race the race. All right, dude, go celebrate, and we'll catch up with you next week, man. Will do. Thank you. All right. That was Robert Barris. He is your second place driver. Let's go find our winner and see if Wingnut gets caught up with him. Patrick Gasson, you're in the 93.
Mr. Dasonia, it's our booth. You get a copy? What's going on, Wingnut? Mate, it's good to see you up here. Finally. <laughs> Damn right, man. Hey, tell us about your race, man. How was it? It was nerve-wracking. All plate racing is nerve-wracking. These trucks are just loose in general. Well, tell us about that. We heard the uh, trucks at the start were really, really loose. Also, the track was really warm. Did you notice the trucks get better over the race? It seemed like it stayed pretty loose from what I've heard from all the other guys that left the setup as, you know, stock as they, they can leave it. Because I changed what I could. I switched my steering ratio to 16 to 1 and then put my offset to a positive 10. Because I know in the past it's helped quite a bit with something that's super loose. It obviously helped out. In the long run. Oh yeah, man. Well, hey, that final caution. I'm guessing you were not looking for that whatsoever. No, I mean, I was sitting in my my channel with my teammate Jason, and he's like listening to. I just talked his ear off those few caution laps. I was like, "What do I do? Top, bottom, <laughs> Robert, Ron? I don't know." And then just had to wing it. <laughs> well, that's nice, mate. Well, at the start of the race, do you have any particular plans? Or was it just kind of like you know, survive, maybe find your teammate and rush to the front, or? Was there any, anything particular, just surviving it? At the beginning, it's more see what see what you got, see what what everyone's gonna do, you know, pra you know, see what the draft's gonna do, where everyone's gonna run, what the checkup is, what, and everything. So, but then normally, I once I figure that out, I'll just roll with it, roll with the punches, and then you know if you how your car is gonna act, if you get you know dropped, if you get put in the the center or the outside. Yeah, these uh, play tracks can always be, you know, a bit of a luck of the draw. Well, hey, that final corner, final lap. Did you think you had it, or did you think they were going to get you? I that whole entire lap, the last, well, even on the start, well, from the greenway checkered, I missed the shift, and I said Oof. to myself, "That's that." And then Ron came out of nowhere and pushed it. Then that's when Sean was able to cut across my nose, and I did not lift my foot. I loosened him up coming out <laughs> of two, and I got under him. But then well, he got back by me with Barris's help. And then it was just all like a white blur, just waiting to see what happened. <laughs> I love those finishes, man. We're just not quite sure how it happened, but you made, you got here onto the podium in first place. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Well, hey, carry on this momentum next week. Before we let you go, is anyone you give a shout-out to, brother? i got to give out a shout-out to my entire team at uh, Relentless Motorsports, you know, and the sponsors of uh, Clocks by Christopher and Pets by Paradise. And we got Apex Button Box helping out the league with all the free giveaways there. You know, can't ask for better teammates with, you know, uh... Jason and uh, Dave and Todd. Without them, I wouldn't be here today. They've helped me so much with my racing and everything. So, well, fair enough, man. Well, hey, go find a mate. Go have a beer. Go celebrate. You had a damn good race, and congratulations again on the win. Thank you. Have a great night, guys. Awesome, bro. That was the Sonya first place, and that was as you said, a white blur at the end. I don't blame him. That was what we probably saw too. I'll tell you what, man, uh, definitely a, uh, a great, great finish here, man, as always. These guys do such a great job with it. And uh, it, was, it was a nail biter for sure. Try to get this backed up a little bit. Hang on. Give me one second here, man. This thing's being retarded. Keeps jumping off him. There we go. All right. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely a great finish, man. And considering that, uh, you know, the trucks were as loose as they were and the temperatures were what they were at that uh, at the beginning of the race and then what they dropped down to, it was pretty good. <clears throat> we uh, take a quick look at the summary. Man, we had 32 lead changes here. We went 212 miles, and uh, the track temperature at the finish was 82 degrees. Started at 115, so, you know, it was definitely uh, pretty slickery out there. But you oh, got, yeah, these guys were complaining about it being loose, and they managed to hold on. It was a great race. 
And DeSonier started 11th. He got 13 laps led and takes home the win. So congratulations to him. You see he's got the uh, clocks by Christopher on the side of that truck. Um, even the 126, Sean Stevens, man, with a third place finish here for the uh, second race with him, showed a lot of uh, good, clean racing out there, man, and um, good to see him out there. Robert Barris is going to take second, so uh, pretty good pretty good run, guys. Uh, always, man, even last week, um, and not last week, a couple weeks ago when Steve Yenish won over at Daytona in the series, uh, we were at the edge of the seat at the finish of the race, and you see it again here, man. So great, great job these guys do, man. Um, not too bad. Not too bad. Next week, we will be back at Indy. Um, you heard of, with the new package and everything, some guys aren't really sure what the A car is going to do, the cup car is going to do at Indy. Um, I haven't personally been out in Indy with the uh, new package, so I have no clue uh, what it is. But the A car has been pretty good. We've seen a lot of uh, close racing, and it'll track that big. We'll probably see a similar uh, speedway type of racing, you know, a little bit of drafting, probably a bunch of guys grouped up together. But uh, don't forget to mark that down and tune in next week for the uh, Clocks by Christopher Indianapolis in the Cup Car. Uh, Wingy, pretty good, brother. Glad you're able to be here with us tonight. Glad that your uh, voice is back. And uh, I know we did some rambling on that. But I cannot wait until uh, we get this race together, too, with the uh, Watkins Glen thing going on. We'll have to uh, talk about that after the race here tonight and get some of these guys on the same page. But anyway, we appreciate yeah. everybody tuning in tonight. I uh, hope you enjoyed the race. Congratulations once again to the uh, number 93, Patrick DeSonia, for winning this race. 11th place start, 13th place finish. So let's run through the results, and then we'll pack it up and get out of here, all right? Sounds good to me, mate. All right. So you got finishing first, Patrick DeSonia, the number 93. Uh, second is Robert Barris. Third, we'll go to Sean Stevens. Ron Hollyfield finally with a fourth place finish. Josh Stewart will finish fifth. Kenneth Sager goes sixth. Adam, uh, Adam Matz will go seventh. Seth Schultz, eighth. Adam Lewis, ninth. James Brown, tenth. Then we got Steve Yenich in 11th. Jason Mullis, 12th. Rob Jenkins, 13th. Mike Major, 14th. Mark Jenkins in 15th, Art Peck in 16th, uh, Jeff Yenich in 17th, Bill Alt, I believe that's how you pronounce it, in 18th, David Kamara 19th, Matt Wagner 20th, then we have Todd Cray 21st, and Cody 2nd. Awesome. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Wingy, have yourself a good one. I'll talk to you after the race, and uh, good night, everybody. Have a good one.